Welcome back to Burn Peak. I'm Seth, and today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different, but kind of the same. Let me get this stuff off, because I can't, you guys can't hear me. Ah, we're going hard in the paint today, or hard in the spray paint. So we've been doing a lot of bike restoration stuff lately, and I've been painting little parts to color match our projects, and quite a few of you have requested a tutorial. How are you painting these parts, and how are they coming out so good? with just a rattle can. Well, I'll be the first one to tell you that I am not qualified to teach you how to paint, but maybe that actually does make me the right person to tell you how to paint. Because I'm not gonna tell you to buy a bunch of stuff, and I'm not gonna tell you to do some long, complicated process. Okay, so we have here this stem cap. This goes on the top of your stem just to put pressure on the bearings, and it's a good thing to theme. So I'm just gonna take this cheap, bright blue spray paint that I got from the hardware store, and we're gonna give it an awesome paint job. So number one, this is all smooth. There's no way that paint is gonna grab to it, so we have to sand it. Now I'm gonna use 400 grit sandpaper. If you're gonna get one type of sandpaper, it's gonna be this. And I have here a spray bottle, and there's just water in it. We're going to wet sand it. So get it covered in water, wad up the sandpaper a little bit, and sand it. Now you're probably not gonna notice much of a difference when you do this. We're just scuffing it up. So if I've thoroughly sanded every part of this, it should not be shiny at all when we dry it off. And as you can see, it's now very dull. That's what we want. If you see any spots that are not dull, you're gonna have to sand them or the paint is not gonna stick right. So the next thing we have to do is remove any sort of grime or grease. So I'm gonna use rubbing alcohol. and then put it in your paint booth. Okay, so when you're spray painting, do it in a really well-ventilated place, like all the garage doors open, close to the garage door. I'm gonna shake it up really, really good. Oscar, you're gonna have to get out of here. How many brain cells do you think he's got left? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just put a really light spray across this. You want to start somewhere else and do a pass. When you first press this, there could be little spatters, there could be a little more paint than you want, and then that's gonna cause like drips and stuff. So start painting someplace else, and then pass the item. Okay, so with this kind of spray paint, if you put a bunch of just little tiny light coats over it, it's not gonna come out all glossy and nice like you think when you look at the can. We gotta make one last coat, that's really heavy. Now, if you go too heavy, it's gonna drip. If you go too light, it's not gonna be all glossy. So, it takes a little bit of practice, but I'll show you. Ah, now we're talking just a nice, smooth coat right across it. No drips or anything. So, we're gonna leave that for about five minutes and then hit it with a heat gun. So, here I have the item curing. The more heat, and the drier the air, the better the paint is going to cure. And 15 minutes later, it is dry, it's good to go. We're gonna put it on a bike so I can show you how it'll look, but I mean, look at how shiny it is. This is a really cool way to customize your bike and it's probably one of the easiest things you can paint. And there you go. Add a little splash of color to your bike and this is the way that I paint a lot of things. I painted the damper switch on the Slope Duro bike with cheap hardware store paint. I've taken it through the bike wash, I've scrubbed it, I've gotten it covered in mud, it's fine. And everybody was like, how did you make it look so good? With cheap hardware store paint. But there are a lot of reasons why you might not want to use cheap hardware store paint. Let me go over that. This is automotive grade paint and it costs way, way more. This is like $12.99 a can and honestly, that's a rip off, but you know what you're getting. First of all, automotive grade paint has a way better nozzle in it, so you're gonna get a better spray. It also has hardener in it, so the paint is going to dry way harder and more durable. So when I'm painting things that are gonna get a lot of contact, then I always use this, and it's gonna be way nastier. If you inhale this stuff even for one second, you die instantly. Just kidding, you'll die slow. So on that note, we're gonna paint something else that I think gets a little more abuse. The little cap on the end of the cassette. But the process is gonna be a little bit different because this doesn't look perfect. It has all sorts of nicks and scratches and things in it. We're gonna need a lower grit. So here, I have 120. It's rougher. It's gonna actually change the finish of this and make it smoother. 
So now that we've sanded down all the rough edges with 120, the correct thing to do is to step up to like 200 sandpaper and then 320 and then I'm gonna go straight to the 400 and just spend a little bit of extra time on it because we're trying to save money here. So now I'm going to introduce something else that is not mandatory, but it's nice to have, and that is tack cloth. What tack cloth is, is it's kind of a waxy gauze. This is a great way to clean off dust in between coats. It's a great way to prep something before you paint it. So here it is, I'm just gonna very lightly hit it with a tack cloth, and any dust that's on this thing is gonna stick to the cloth. Okay, now we're about to use the nasty spray paint, and so I'm gonna suit up. If you leave like 30 seconds or so for it to dry in between, it'll keep it from dripping. So I'm using a heat gun to aid in the drying process. It's pretty chilly out and it's very humid out. The best place you could live is like the desert, right? Uh, the, oh! the worst place you could live is a uh, temperate rainforest, which is where we are. Oh! Oh! Stuff's gonna happen, you're gonna get drips, your whole setup is gonna just go to hell. So let me show you what to do. So, we're getting it good and dry. There are only a few coats of paint on there and yet they were wet and when it went face down, it got all sorts of dust and things on it. So we're gonna give it a light wet sanding again and then we're just gonna go right back to what we were doing. Don't keep your tack cloth in your pocket. All right, let's take this out of the curing booth. And there we go. Nice, durable paint job. They're not gonna look at it from this close. They're gonna look at it from this far away. And that's what we're doing today, painting to the lowest common denominator. So this is an inexpensive matte black stem that I got off of one of the flip bikes. I wanna reuse it, it's nice and short. We're gonna paint it graphite color. It's actually gonna look more different than you think. And then we're gonna make it really glossy. So we're gonna take all the bolts out of the stem. We're gonna take the cap off. And we're gonna paint that separately. Paint is not just a color, it's actually something that is on what you're painting. So if we paint the inside here, it's gonna affect how it hits on a handlebar. So I'm actually gonna throw tape over it and we're not gonna paint the inside. These holes that screws go into, you get paint in the threads, not good, especially this paint that dries really hard. Gonna make it very difficult to screw things in. So let's clean this up, sand it down, and then we're gonna mask off all the areas that we don't wanna paint. Let's get to wet sanding. We are going to take some masking tape and try our best to tape the inside of here. Let's try it. Good use for rusty bolts. I'll just stick them in there. Now we can't get any paint in there. Perfect. So in this case, we have these bolts sticking out. So we can tie a string here and suspend it up in the air when we're painting it. Now we can paint all sides of it. Uh, now we just have to go someplace where we won't die instantly. Oh, look, a drip. We got a drip on it because I suck. Great thing about learning from a complete beginner is I can show you how to fix your screw ups, which are definitely gonna happen. We're gonna sand down until it's smooth. You're still gonna see it, but you're not gonna feel it. If you run your finger over it and you can't feel it, it means you've sanded it down thoroughly enough. Some paint expert's gonna be like, well, if you just do it, do it, then it won't, then it won't drip. Well, I did, dun, 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 and so it dripped, and so that's how to fix it. Yep, looking good. All right, now we're really gonna let this cure pretty nicely before we put the clear coat on. Because as this is drying with this type of paint with the hardener in it, it actually off gases. And so if you put a clear coat over it to make it nice and glossy too soon, then those bubbles are actually gonna come up into the clear coat and you're gonna see them. You're gonna be bummed because you're gonna have to Sand it all down and redo it. Okay, so the thing with clear coat is you want to lay it on really thick, but you don't want it to drip. 
See, that's the side that I wet sanded, and you can't see any of the dullness now that the clear coat's over it. And as shiny as it looks now drying, that's what it's gonna look like when it's totally cured. All right, out of the curing booth it comes. There's our stem. We can screw this together. In fact, let's attach this to some handlebars. Like I said, I'm not a paint expert, but when it comes to painting little things, you really don't need to be. Now, should you get involved in painting and take it up as a hobby and start doing it a lot, the best piece of advice I could give you is to stop listening to me. Go to painting experts and read books and look things up on the internet. Hopefully this gets you hitting the ground running so you can restore little parts, color coordinate your bike, and just have a little fun with spray paint without breaking the bank. So I hope you enjoy spray painting. For those of you who do know how to paint, uh, tell us how to do it cheaper in the comments. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.